Hi everyone, it's Laura here for Moda Scrap and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create a watercolor card using the Poppy stamp set and the Let Your Soul Bloom paper collection. I started by die cutting some watercolor cardstock using the second largest die in the Moda Scrap dashing rectangle set. This is where I will be doing my watercoloring with the Poppies stamp set. And then we will also be using some papers from this beautiful paper collection called Let Your Soul Bloom. Because I want to use the patterned paper to create an edge on the left side of my card panel, I marked that area with a T-square ruler and a pencil, so that that helps me build my floral composition on the available space on my watercolor cardstock. And next I am creating some masks. I am stamping the florals in the Poppies stamp set by Moda Scrap, and I am stamping them on some repositionable packaging labels. This is just some low tack adhesive that I can use to mask my stamped images. And once I stamped enough images, I can go ahead and cut them all out using some scissors. At this point, everything was ready and I could go ahead and do my stamping on my watercolor paper. I positioned the stamps in my Misty I prepped the surface with an anti-static powder tool and then I stamped my images with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I used this ink because it dries a little bit more slowly than others and I can use it to do heat embossing. And in this case I heat embossed my images with clear embossing powder. I masked off the flowers and then I stamped the stems. And again, I used VersaFine Onyx Black Ink and Clear Embossing Powder to stamp and heat emboss my images. And I really like the look of heat embossed images with clear embossing powder. It gives a shiny finish to the images themselves and also the raised edges of the embossing powder help a little when doing watercoloring, which will be the coloring technique that I'll be using today. I stamped and heat embossed the third of the stamps and at each step I'm using my anti-static powder tool so that I'm sure that the embossing powder only sticks to the areas where I have the ink and I don't have any stray particles on my panel. And then off camera I also went ahead and stamped and heat embossed the sentiment and it reads follow your dreams they know the way. As I mentioned, I will be doing some watercoloring to color in my images and today my medium of choice will be Distress Oxides. I pressed the Festive Berries ink pad on my glass mat. I activated the ink with some water from a spray bottle and then I started painting my flowers. The technique I am using today is the wet on wet technique which means that I am first coming in with a layer of clean clear water in the area that I want to paint and then I am adding the pigment that I pick up from my glass mat. I am going to drop the pigment in the areas that I think will be the darkest, so the ones at the base of the petals, and then I will move on and paint another area while the water does the work for me. What this means is that the moisture present on the paper will help the pigments flow and will dilute them as well, so that I get immediately a nice shading and a gradient on my petals. And later on we will come in with a second layer of paint to intensify the contrast and add a little bit of detail. When you watercolor your images, what you need to pay attention to is not to paint two adjacent areas, one right after the other. And this is because the moisture on the paper will cause your paint to bleed. But in this case, because we have these raised embossed lines, we don't have to worry too much about it, because the embossed lines themselves will keep the water and the pigment contained. 
The reason why I chose watercolor as my coloring medium today was to match the paper collection that I will be using on this card. This is part of the latest release by Moda Scrap and it's called Let Your Soul Bloom. It's full of gorgeous floral illustrations which have this watercolor look to them. So I thought it would be fun to combine this new patterned paper with a previously released stamp set. And I felt that these poppies were just perfect for this purpose. What I'm doing now is I'm adding a second layer of color using H Mahogany Distress Oxide. This is a little bit darker, so it will help me build some depth in the images. And I am only adding a little bit to the very bottom of the petals, and then I'm blending it out with some water and with some Festive Berries Distress Oxide. You can of course decide to skip this step and have just the one layer of Distress Oxide in Festive Berries, but I do like adding some contrast to my images, and this is why I decided to use the Aged Mahogany as well. I added a little bit of Distress Oxide in peeled paint to the stems of the flowers, and then I left everything to dry and started working on the patterned paper. I chose these two designs from the Let Your Soul Bloom collection and I'm using the guideline that I drew on my watercolor panel to figure out exactly where I need to die cut my paper. And by doing so I will have this dashed line detail going all over the front of my card. I repeated the same steps to die cut this solid paper, also part of the Let Your Soul Bloom collection. And then I used my guillotine trimmer to trim down a small strip of the paper with the leaves. And also because I will only need a very thin strip from this solid pattern paper, I trimmed that too and I put the rest aside and I will use that on a separate project. I glued the two strips of pattern paper together and before adhering them to my card, I decided that I wanted to add a little bit more detail. So I masked my flowers with the same masks I had used at the beginning of the card making process and then I added some splatters. I'm using a paintbrush and Distress inks and oxide. I started with Distress ink in black suit and now I'm using Festive Berries and Aged Mahogany Distress Oxides, which I had used also to paint my flowers. And this will create some extra detail and movement to the front of my card. I then took that tiny little strip of patterned paper with the leaves that I had previously trimmed off of the larger strip, and I adhered that to my border. And then I could go ahead and actually adhere this border to my card front, aligning it to the left edge. I then decided to frame my panel with some more of that solid paper from the Let Your Soul Bloom collection. So I cut it to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I glued the watercolor panel on top. I then added a little bit of definition to the flowers using a Prismacolor pencil and creating some kind of brush stroke movements. This will add some texture and also intensify the shading a little bit. For some extra shine I decided to glue down some clear sequins in different sizes around the sentiment. And lastly, I added some white highlights to the petals using a white gel pen. I mounted everything on a top folding A2 card base, cut at four and a quarter by 11 inches and scored at five and a half inches. And as a very last step, I decided to decorate the inside of the card as well by stamping those same three poppies as well as the stems with Distress Oxide in Aged Mahogany. And here is the finished result. 
I really love how this poppy stamp set matches nicely with the newly released Let Your Soul Bloom papers. This card turned out really elegant thanks to these gorgeous designs. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I inspired you to create with the poppy stamp set and the Let Your Soul Bloom paper pad by Moda Scrap. Don't forget to subscribe for more inspiration. Thank you all so much for stopping by and have a great day.